The Zoe MS CS, a great way to figure out if computer science is for you. Coming up. Chronos Matrix, focus on what matters most. Visually keep your goals in check and create new goals so you can stay on schedule. Watch your daily, weekly, and monthly results to stay focused. Free time optimization app. I think one of the most relevant uses of, um, of a quick strategy, and this kind of goes towards uh, any kind of endeavor that, uh, that you're trying to figure out, is to use as much rapid testing as you can. Right. This is, I mean, there's also a computer science uh, um, concept, but one method for, um, for kind of figuring out if you enjoy doing something before you even spend, you know, the next several years working on a, on a degree is put yourself in the shoes of somebody who's already doing it. Right. So I have so many examples of this, so I'll, I'll just give a, uh, um, a, a couple of them. My sister studied uh, nursing for like four years. Right and she never stepped into a hospital in the role of a nurse, right? My father was a doctor, so she always just assumed it's, you know, what she'd be doing is what the nurses that, you know, we had seen growing up, what they were doing, the people that were close to uh, my father when, uh, when he was working, she just assumed she'd be doing that kind of work. And in all fairness, those are more like office type, you know, jobs for, for nurses. She didn't get into, you know, the real deal for, uh, for most hospitals. It's you know, cleaning people up, it's picking stuff up. It's, it's not too clean. Uh, um, let, let me just put it, you know, gently. And she had no idea that that's what most nurses um, end up doing on a day-to-day -day basis. She had no idea. She spent four years studying for her, uh, her bachelor's degree before getting a, a job as a nurse. And I mean, yeah, the pay was great and there was all these benefits, but she didn't know what the day-to-day -day, um, type of work really entailed, right? So, by chance, you know, uh, it's, you know, you can see some of the videos that I have on, on this channel. I spent many years directing, DJing, editing. It's like I'd done a lot of different types of uh, projects. And while I was building uh, um, several of my portfolios and, and my demo reels, um, as people always saw me in front of a computer, they just assumed I knew how to program, which I really had no idea. It's not what I went to school for. I just took a couple of math classes. I took like this strange kind of Linux course. I don't even remember what we went through, but you know, I passed the course having no idea what I was doing. <laughs> but um, the, uh, the point here is I didn't know I enjoyed programming until I got hired for a couple of uh, projects while I was, you know, working on my, uh, on my portfolio um, for, you know, DJing, directing, via edit, it just all the different types of art uh, uh, work that I was doing at the time. And I had gotten hired to program. It was a total of three different uh, projects that I got hired on at different times, right? And that was like my introduction to programming. And I realized after just working on, on, on the, the first one, everything was just too new. But by the second one, each one of these lasted a couple of months. By the second one, I kind of was getting a hand of it. By the third one, I actually found it very relaxing. It's like, cause you know, I've always been in a Tetris and those kind of like puzzle games. And it kind of felt like you were just working on a puzzle. Like this piece isn't missing here. And that, that logic thinking that was appealing to me even when I was doing math, um, uh, when I was in high school, it sounded appealing for that. It, it, it kind of worked on a different type of the brain. It wasn't at all the creative fun, you, you know, making, uh, um, making something from scratch kind of process that, uh, that the creative work was. But it was a different type of, it, it worked on a different type of brain, uh, uh, part of my brain that I also found very engaging. So I learned by the time I was working on that third project, that uh, third uh, uh, programming project, that if I wanted to, you know, put the uh, directing or uh, any of the other creative art uh, work that I was doing aside, I could see myself doing this as well. So that's kind of what I ended up doing. It's like while I was directing, while I was editing, while I was doing other projects, since it was just another form of income, you know, most of us that, you know, uh, are in Los Angeles and Hollywood for several years, we end up doing so many different things because it's like your initial thing that you're trying to do might, uh, might take some time. That that's, it was just kind of like a side job, but I kind of always saw myself, you know, if this doesn't work out, like I already have a backup. And I didn't have to go through four years of a, of a college education. I didn't have to go through all these jobs to kind of figure out what that component is. And that component to me was 
conditional statements. You're looking at you know the state control of uh, of, of the system. Just the two or three major major parts. You know, printing statements to see what what's in the data. Simple things that's like you're going to be doing over and over and over again. That it's like the essential thing that you should figure out in any field. What's that particular component that you're going to be doing every day, and then see is that what you want to do. So another really uh, um, um, really quick example. I had an ex that was uh, studying for uh, for um, to get a degree in in, uh, in farm D, right? She wanted to be uh, um, in, in the pharmaceuticals industry, and that pays really well, you know, great prestige. She didn't know until she actually interned for uh, for uh, for a couple of months that what she was doing literally was going to be leading to a job where she's on the phone with patients verifying. Like that's such a humongous part of what uh, uh, people that do this kind of job um, are doing day in and out. And she saw that, she's like, okay, this is, horrible. well, what a great way to figure out if you want to do something. Instead of spending the next six to eight years of your life trying to get that degree to then get the job and then you're in the job, you're like, oh, I hate this, this is horrible. Look at how many people, you know, suddenly become uh, doctors or lawyers and then they're doing it, they just don't enjoy it. That, it's, I, I see the whole, you know, learn to code. I have no idea why that's like a banned term in, in uh, some social media science, but it's, <laughs> I mean, that's what I did. It's like I was working as a, as a director, as an artist, and I just, it, I just wasn't paying the bills at, at a certain point with what I was doing. So instead of just finding another art form, I'm like, well, why don't I just try this whole programming thing? Since I spent all these years marketing, you know, for the directing, I really should do some other videos on this because that's, uh, that's, that, that's quite a bit to pack in there. But... Long story short, what I'm trying to say is, instead of me spending all these years trying to, you know, gain this kind of knowledge in something else, go in and get another bachelor because I already had bachelor uh, in art. Um, when I saw what what these online degrees had, and I didn't know of OMS CS at the time, I was just looking at other versions of it. But I'm like, no, this actually might not be bad. So it's like that's why I decided to go uh, back to you know community colleges, just get the couple of courses that I should have had if I had gone to, to get that degree. Because it, it's, you can get all the courses that you need to prepare yourself for a, um, for a master's in computer science. I, I mean, other than even advanced data search, there was a couple of courses that if you look at different community colleges, there's, there's gonna be some community colleges that even offer those courses. Or maybe you just go to university, just take one or two of those extra classes that the community colleges don't provide. But in general, all the math, all the programming courses that I really needed to, you know, to solidly go into OMSES, it's like they were available at community colleges. I had to bounce around a little bit. I ended up going to three different community colleges in, uh, in Los Angeles. But all in all, I mean, it was it was such a cheap, quick. You get in there really quickly. Also, that's another that's another benefit. So, are you going to do the OMSES route, or are you going to you know go for your bachelor's in, in computer science? What I highly recommend is get your hands you know quote unquote dirty in the uh, in, in, in this kind of field first, just start coding a project, follow several different tutorials and get an idea of what coding is gonna be like. A basic simple version of it, if you find conditional statements, if you find printing out what, what's in the data and just basic logical statements to be really boring and annoying, you're like, what, when do we get to the fun stuff? It's like, that's what you're gonna be doing most of the day. You're gonna, the majority of the time you're gonna see what Boolean do I have to set up? What type of conversion am I doing for, for this data type? That's, if you find those kind of processes really annoying, this isn't for you, right? So there, believe it or not, there's gonna be a lot of people that get into this program that haven't even programmed before. I've met several people in different classes that it's like, I don't talk to them anymore after the class because well, that's, that's the, that, that's the beauty of an online class. You've never talked to any of these people afterwards. So I don't know if, did they end up dropping? Did they, but you usually see them in the beginning of the course and then I don't see so many of them you know, towards the end of the, uh, in, in that semester that they don't even have basic uh, programming skills. Well, I mean, OMS CS is, 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 is obviously gonna be much, much cheaper, you know, than getting any graduate uh, um, degree in such a, you know, high prestige name as, as Georgia Tech. But still, I mean, you could, you could also just go to a couple of community colleges or just pick up a couple of books, just work on it on your own first. Now, if you've already done that and you have a, you know, you've done a couple of tutorials online and you kind of have a, a good feeling, I think OMSES is a great way to uh, get in there and see, it's like, do you really want to spend the time to really, really get get uh, get into this field? And maybe it isn't, maybe you'd want to do something. There's, there's some people that, you know, get into this and they just want to be doing, uh, um, you know, 
CSS or maybe some light JavaScript that they don't want to get so in depth. It's like, this is a really, really good way to do that. Now, do you need to go through the whole OMS ES front? Honestly, no, you can do most of this stuff just to get that idea with several uh, YouTube videos, right? Kind of like what we're doing here, right? It's like, you're just what, you know, hearing some guy that went through the program that, uh, that's giving you some advice. It's like, you don't have to go through all that experiences yourself. But if you think, I think if you're already at that stage where it's like, you like it enough uh, as far as programming uh, um, coding goes, you like it enough that you think you might, you know, uh, um, really take it serious as an industry uh, that you're going to pursue. I think OMSES is a um, great way to really test how deep you want to go into it. And also, since there's so many different courses that give you an entire structure of what you're going to be doing from software development process, from uh, database systems, from Kabai from machine learning for there's a lot of courses that you'll get a very good general idea of what you're doing or even like the uh, the um, edutech educational technology where you're doing it, it's a lot of people have said it's like a mini PhD it's like you're you're putting together an entire project from the research to all the articles you're writing to the demo it's it's almost like you're doing your uh, your your PhD thesis it's it's like a mini version you know it's a, it's a very condensed version of that but even that, I'd say, I think that's a great course to take if you are thinking, do you want to pursue the PhD? I took that class and it's like, I don't think it's going to be the round that I'm going to be taking, but it's, uh, it was a great class. And again, it gave me a little microcosm of what I'll be doing. I wanted to get into robotics. I thought it's like, I would be really interested in that. And after taking AI for robotics, it's like, I just didn't think it was, uh, it was the right fit for me. Computer vision was another great class. It's like, I had certain ideas that I thought I would pursue. And then I realized, well, for what I want to do, it's like I, I can kind of use uh, um, several libraries and do that kind of job. But when it comes to natural language processing, when it comes to, um, you know, semantic search, there's other areas where it's like, okay, I want to go uh, more deep in that. And that's one thing that I think it's, it's very important, even though they kind of try and tell you to focus on the specialization from, from the get go, I would say, just treat this as, as uh, just like a, as a buffet. I think I like a little bit of this. I think, you know, this course might be interesting. Think of it like that until you get towards the, uh, the middle range of uh, the courses you're going to take. Because honestly, that, I mean, it's just saving me so much time where it's like, I, I would, I thought I would be really getting into that area. And since they go so in depth, you get to see, you know, the general, very, very specific of what you're going to be doing in that particular industry that um, I found it very, very useful to just sample, just take a whole bunch of courses, even though, okay, this was technically machine learning, this is technically um, computing systems. It's like, the, since I took so many in, in so many different areas, I had a very, very good overview of uh, what were the areas that I want to pursue. And now, especially with the machine learning for trade, that is such a cool class. That's, uh, that's um, I'm done, um, uh, software development process and, and machine learning for trade. I've enjoyed them so much that I might be interested in doing the, uh, the t um, being a TA afterwards if, if I have time based on what I'm doing. So anyway, just wrapping up, it's a great way to uh, getting a, um, you know, getting your feet wet in, in particular industries. And then you're going to get your feet wet, but like really deep dive in particular subjects. So if you're just starting out, I highly recommend just get a, pick up a couple books, take a couple of uh, community college um, courses. If you know where this is, where you want to go, I say just take as many different courses as you can. You know, spread around the different specializations to kind of figure out, okay, this, I thought I liked this, I didn't. This is definitely going to be an area that I pursued more because that's helped me a lot. Hope it helps. Talk to you in the next one.